This mother speaking, and I'm trying to my children and their children as much of my life as I can remember, and I was told, and as I was told at this time. Also, your father and mine, in the first, first, my grandfather came to Ireland when a young man. He and his two brothers, their sister started with them, but was capt captured by pirates before arriving in the United States. Then Paul's brother Will died soon after arriving in the States. Peter was a Catholic priest, left for the West, and was never heard again. Grandma and Grandpa had two boys, Theodore, my father, and Charlie. Three daughters, Martha, Mary, and Teresa. My father married Priscilla Griffith. During the, during the war, 60s, on a furlough. After the war, they moved to Texas. They had five little girls, Betty, Amanda, Jody, Maddie and Amanda. Jody died at eight years of age. Four months later, my father died, meaning mother with four little girls. The oldest 13 years. Also, my mother was pregnant. Mother was never well anymore. It was too much for her. Her brother, Harden Griffith, came to Texas, taking her and her family back to Grandpa and Grandma Griffith. Soon I and a twin was born. A twin died. I lost my mother when I was four years old. My Grandma Griffith kept me until I was seven years old. Then my Aunt Mary taking me so to be in school more. Stayed with her two years, then back to Grandma for another year. At that time, Aunt Mary lived at Chapel Hill in Sevier County. Then when I was, I was with Grandma one year, Aunt Mary went to the Indian Territory, the Choctaw Nation then. Her sister, Teresa, lived there, had a large family and no school for the children, close enough for them to go and be at home, too. So Aunt Mary went there to teach her children, so I was taken up there so I could go to school. Aunt taught at home. My Aunt Teresa's five children, myself, my cousin, that Aunt Mary was raising, and five outside children, which was all the children of school age in the district. So you see it was not very well settled up at that time. Anyway, I stayed a year, and at that time, two of my sisters were married, and Sister Amanda came and got me at Christmas time. I stayed with her three years, then went back to the Indian Territory to my other sisters. There, I was, then I was 14 years old by then, and on my own from then on. The sisters that needed me the worst, that is where I was. I worked for a them for my board and got what little work I could get outside to buy my clothes. I remember very well working for a woman five months. At one time, I got a dollar and fifty cents a week. I worked from five in the morning until eleven at night. She had seven in the family and from two to five boarders and every weekend for three to five salesmen for the night. When I was almost 20, I married Andrew Long. He only lived 15 months after we were married. I was pregnant and he passed away. Seven months afterwards, my little boy was, was born. I had gone back to my sister's till after he was born. Then I went to Federal in Washington County when he was five months old. When I got back, Miss Haggard wanted me to come stay with her and her mother. Her mother was in her 80s, so I hadn't fully decided yet when her mother taken sick and passed away in a few days. On the way back from the funeral, Miss Haggard asked me to get out and stay the night with her as she didn't feel well. She had gone to the funeral with my sister and I. I got out to spend the night and spent five happy years with her. She was six, four years old. Until the day Daddy and I were married, 
that it was Homer, was born. Homer was born in Taney, Illinois, May 1875. His mother passed away because he was only 10 years old. Later, his father sold their home and then to his brothers in Arkansas. When Homer was 13, his father died. Homer had an older brother and sister, but when their father died, Arthur had left home, and the sister went back to Illinois. Homer stayed with his uncle for a short time, then struck out on his own. From then on, I guess he had a rough time, but he never got into any trouble. He was trapped door boy in the mines for some time, went from one place to another, worked as hot he could get, sometimes just for his board. He soon learned steam engineering at about 17. He married when he was about 26. His wife passed away close to two years later. I don't know if she's had a high on. Left him with a little boy seven months old. When his little boy was close to two years old, my boy, five, we met at the church for first time. We were both going to a wedding that afternoon. He was from Hartford to see his little boy at that time. The next time we met was at a funeral. From then on, we kind of found until a few days before we were married. When we were married, we moved into a log cabin with a side room, porch, Right close to the range, to the range that had cameras came for his boy, so that the little boy could get used to both of us before we would take him on. We stayed there three months, then moved to Harford, Arkansas, where his job was running the engine at the time was waiting for him. So our first boy, Kenneth, was born January the 14th. When he was two years old, we moved to Souter. As work my was going to get his slack where he was working. He went to pumping there in the mines. Pat was born there in July 22nd, 1909. Daddy had been taking a course in engineering, gas man, and mine foreman. And Pat was one week old. He was called to because he was taking examination. He went and got an A grade certificate in all three. I have them now. Also, I have his graduating certificate from the school. They gave him a job during a mine at Bacoshi that time. We moved there from Pat was two weeks old, dressing. During the time we lived there, he was gas man, shop foreman, engineer, and pit boss, or underground foreman. When Pat was nine months old, he was called to McCurtain. There had been a big explosion at the time there. He went with his safety lamp, gas mask, and along. The first night there, he taken out 75 dead men and nine alive. He sure was a sick man the next day when he got home. Willie was born there in August 1910. Our little girl, Laura, was born there in Bacosha, August 11, 1913. It was born 1911. 1911, yeah. She was 18 months. We moved back to Calhoun. My what suitor had been suitor. They first sent him to the assistant underground foreman, and that three months he was head foreman with two assistants. He was five, six years. Elder was born there. It doesn't make me out that good, does it? Little Mickey was born there. He passed away, even only 18 months old. In 1918, Elmer was born. 
just at the end of the World War I, then 1920, the two days of no second day of November, Dale was born. The last days of November, Daddy and Jeff decided to California. He got a job as soon as he got there at the oil well. I began to try to sell out. Got most all done by the 16th of February and brought the rest of the family to California. I'm sure I didn't say that. Daddy finally got settled down with company after, well, after about two years and worked out that he was retired by company at the age of 64 when we went on a delayed honeymoon. By that time, four, all but four of our children were married and had homes of their own and the rest were old and old enough to take care of themselves in the home. We were gone about a month, had a wonderful time, and did enjoy it so well. Don't let anybody tell you that a person can't have a good honeymoon and that they're gray-headed. Because to do, I just try it. Two of the children were married after we got back home. Billy got married soon after we returned, a lot of a year later. Dad never did get tired talking of our trip and the wonderful time we had and the different countries and places we visited till he passed away on December 30th, 1957. Calvin was married at the beginning of World War II. They were taken in service, then our soon joined. They were there there till the end. Gail was married soon after he got home from overseas. Elmer was over a while after the war to service airplanes. Well, I guess this is the end of my conversation to my children and all my mistakes. <laughs> Only I wish all of you were Merry Christmas and a happy New Year. Mm. Well, I think I'll add my children's family. Kim was married to Helen Ferguson. Had two children, Gay and Paul. Gay married Leela Musher and has two children, Susan and Phillips. Paul is in the Navy. He's married to Edna Stanfield. And they have two children, Melvin and Janine. Janine married. Dwayne Morris, and they have two boys, Randy and Mitchell. Melvin spent three years in the Army and came back to finish school and will graduate in June with a degree of mechanical engineering. Bill married LaVon DeWitt. Laura married Ed Abersall, and they have two boys, Billy and Denny. Billy is in college in Washington State, then freshman in high school. Elmer married Ruth Hill, and they have two children, Becky and Jimmy. Becky in junior high, Jimmy in grammar school. Gail married Dora Lee Ford, and they have two boys, Bob and Mike. I have ten grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. And my 81st birthday will soon be here. <laughs>